This training session is about empowering you to become an awesome data administrator. So it's all the information you need to know to be able to manage that data in Yellowfin. So let's jump in and have a look at what we'll focus on. Uh, we're mainly going to focus on being able to create and manage your data source connections. Uh, and then we're also going to look at how to build Yellowfin views and how you're going to maintain them. That also includes things like how you're joining tables together, the conditions you're going to apply, how you're going to format them, all of that sort of stuff. Now, the Yellowfin views are a really key selling point in Yellowfin because it's this customizable metadata layer. So it actually allows it actually allows customers to be able to make the whole report building process really easy for their end users. So as a reseller, always make sure you push how fantastic this is and how easy this or how much this is going to make their lives easier as well. Now, so let's jump into having a look at the data sources first. So what is a data source? A data source is a record in Yellowfin that contains the connection details to access data for all the reports and dashboards. So this is actually the very first step that you need to do before you can build reports and dashboards or Yellowfin views. Now, there's a number of different way, uh, a number of different data sources that Yellowfin can connect to. We can connect to SQL databases, cubes, CSV files, as well as very recently we started connecting to third-party connectors as well, which we'll go into more detail shortly. Now, the most common type of data source that we connect to is some sort of SQL database. So this is what we're going to focus on primarily. So the first thing that we really want to be able to do is to set up this connection source with the right connection details. So we need to provide things like the host name, the port, perhaps the database name, and then also user credentials, the username and password of a user who's authorized to read and consume that database. Now there's also some advanced options and security settings that can be set, which you can see here on the screen. Now what I'm going to also do to help us along is swap between the storyboard and a real version of Yellowfin. So if I just swap over, now you'll see here I'm in my admin, um, my admin console menu. And what we're focusing on is just this first step, the data source. Now if I want to create a new data source, I simply can press add or also don't forget you can also create data sources from that yellow hot button that floats around. Now either of those buttons will open up the same screen, which is here, let's create a new connection. So the first step that you're doing here is choosing what type of data source you're wanting to connect to. Now, across the top are where all of our traditional options are, such as linking to a database, the cube, a Jindy, or CSV file. And then we've got the third-party connectors available here. We'll go into these guys in a bit more detail, just focusing at the moment on a database connection. Now, with this database connection, we simply provide a name for it, which will be a reference name in Yellowfin, and we can give a description. Then we choose what type of database it is that we're wanting to report off. So you've got all of the major SQL, uh, SQL databases available here in the list, all of your Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, Postgres, as well as your Microsoft Azure platforms as well. So there's lots to choose from. You simply scroll down until you find the one you're going to connect to. I'll just use Postgres as an example. Depending on the database type you choose, the settings below will adjust so that it makes sure it has all the right credentials for that type of database. So the next thing I would do would be to enter in my local host, oh sorry, my database host, which in my example I have a local version running. So I'm going to just pop it on local host, put in the correct port, and then I would enter in the database name that I want to report off. Provide that username and password. Then from there, before you click create view, I always recommend coming in and testing the connection. So I'll get either a connection failed or connection successful. There are also the other options here for that advanced connector, uh, sorry, advanced connection settings. So if I click that, oops, sorry, let me just add a name. If I go to advanced connection editor, it actually will open this connection into a full screen for me. And now I see all these additional settings here, 
for more advanced settings. So most commonly you would come in here and look at the connection pool and you might increase the number of connections that you're allowing in or your timeout. You'd also maintain security from the security tab or access filters, but we'll cover those two options in the next lesson. Uh, the other areas here are the usage parameters where I can set some defaults for the system as well as whether I'm going to allow things like broadcasting and subscribing. I'll also point out the writable option. Later when we have a quick look at CSVs, you'll need to activate this. And lastly is the views and content. So as you start to create views and reports based off this data source, you'll just get a big list of all the content here. So you could really easily look at how much your data source is actually being used. So let's move along to the next type of connection, which is our third party connectors. So with third party connectors, they're actually allowing us to connect to applications that previously we didn't have access to their data behind them because you didn't know the database details. So these are things such as like LinkedIn, Google Analytics, Google Spreadsheets, YouTube, Outlook calendars, all those sorts of things. Um, so these actually are now available with Yellowfin. They don't necessarily come installed straight away. You may actually need to go to the marketplace and download them first, but they're all free to access. Um, and once you do sort of download them and connect to your data, they actually come with out of the box content that's ready for you to consume. So for example, if I was to download the, the YouTube connector and attach it to my YouTube channel, I'd actually would get a, a dashboard instantly that has a bunch of reports on there about you know what videos have the most likes, the most views, all of that sort of stuff, saving me a lot of time. You can of course also build your own reports based on those uh, these connectors as well. So to actually get them started, as I said, you do need to download what we call a plugin. So the plugin actually allows you to, it gives, it provides all the detail, I suppose, that Yellowfin needs. So these are available on our online marketplace. You will need a login to our customer portal to access these. But once you download them, you then navigate to your plugin management to install. So first, let me just show you the Yellowfin marketplace. So if you go to our website and click on Marketplace, you'll then get a bunch of different things that are available for you to download. And if you just filter this down to connectors, it'll just make it easier for you to find the connectors here. So I can see a few available here. As I said, they're free and you just need to be logged into the website to be able to download them. So that will download a file. I'm just now going to swap to my Yellowfin instance and if we navigate back out to my admin console, the plugin management screen is over here. So once I download that file, I would come to the plugin management screen and I would add in a new one and I'm just going to add the, the jar file that it downloads into here. So then it would get added to my list of available connectors. Now, so I want to be able to show you exactly how these get set up. So just as an example, I'm going to jump back to my admin console. I'm going to connect to our YouTube channel. So I'm going to press this big plus button and I'm going to add a new data source. This time, rather than choosing the database option, I'm going to click on my YouTube connector. So what you get here is a, a screen for a new connection, really similar to that database screen. But what we're going to do is connect to our YouTube channel. So you'll see how easy these are to really use. So all I do is simply give the, the connection a name. So I'm going to call this the Yellowfin channel. Actually, sorry, I should call it the Yellowfin YouTube channel. And I'm going to request the pin. Now, so if you, you'll be asked to then enter in the, the username and password. So what I'm going to do is choose our Yellowfin email address and enter in the password. Now, depending on your YouTube channel, like that, that your account may be linked to numerous channels. So just make sure you do choose the right account. So I'm going to use this Yellowfin business intelligence one. 
and then I'm going to say yes allow yellowfin to access this. I then get given a code so I simply copy and paste that into here for my pin and validate that. That is as hard as it is so now by validating that pin YouTube is now passing through all the right credentials for us and I'm just going to say launch the pre-built content. So what Yellowfin is going to be doing right now is it's installing all of the reports, the dashboards and the Yellowfin views that I need to be able to now consume this YouTube dashboard. It's taken me to my browse page um, and I can see right here at the most recent is a dashboard it's called YouTube so this is just brand new it wasn't here before. And now I get to load through all of the YouTube reports. So complete out of the box reports there. I simply just press add and add this now to my dashboard permanently. And I can continue to manage and monitor how my channel is doing. So it's really easy to use and consume all of these different connectors and like the third party connectors with all the pre-built content. They are fantastic. So that's pretty much connectors in a nutshell. Now if we continue to focus on more so the SQL database connections though, the next step in the scenario is to create views in Yellowfin. So let's start with I guess what is that Yellowfin view. So a Yellowfin view is a metadata layer that sits between the data source and the report builder. It is used to be able to define the tables, the relationships and the fields that we want to be able to report off. It also allows us to apply that default formatting options to make everything really seamless. The huge benefit of this is the fact that the person who is writing all your reports doesn't need to have a clue about how, how the database hangs together if you've already built the view for them. So that means you can have a lot more people building reports that rather than having to rely on your on your DBA or someone like that. So what's really involved with that view? As we mentioned before, there's quite a few areas. So we're going to look at how we actually create views, how we join tables together, how we can apply conditions to tables, rename them, um, select the fields we want to report off, and then of course how we do all the formatting and activate all the Yellowfin features.